I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Jeremy Fisher, the founder of Lucky Ducky. Jeremy, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. This is uh, great to be here. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into uh, the NFT collection of Lucky Ducky and how the community is growing out and the ambitious plans that you and your team have for 2023. Let's just break it off at the top level with what is Lucky Ducky and the NFTs and how did that idea come about? So um, I'm an uh, animator from uh, working in LA for the past decade or so on like shows like Robot Chicken, uh, worked for Hallmark. Um, I do a lot of claymation and a lot of uh, work in stop motion with my hands. So uh, seeing projects like Cool Cats and Bored Apes and all these uh, generative collections uh, this past year and two years um, really got me thinking about how to bring something that's handmade and very like um, very much what I do in uh, claymation into that space. So I mm -hmm. started working with um, a developer and a team and we came up with this concept of Lucky Ducky, which is all handmade claymation uh, characters, and it's all uh, each trait is sculpted in my garage. We we um, we build it, we shoot it, and it's all um, animated. And every character is uh, kind of like a little little character you can almost feel like you could hold, um, mm -hmm. which is very um, different from a lot of the stuff you see on on the NFT side. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that, with my background in animation, uh, I've also have a background in storytelling and, and coming up with characters and, and um, we really wanted to start the, from the ground floor to make uh, a series and make it into a uh, show. Um, so it's like a, kind of the perfect opportunity for us to work towards um, building something that's um, larger than just an NFT project. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of projects, they uh, after they launch, they're like, well, what about a cartoon series? And then they have to work backwards from mm -hmm. those characters to make it into a series. Um, so from the, the day one, we uh, started developing the characters and thinking about all the traits and what they mean uh, with the series and and um, thinking about like what stuff is age appropriate, what's not, uh, and trying to really just make the best um, project that could be now brought to studios and and brought into the mainstream um so that's kind of where we've started and kind of where we're uh in the process of taking it to right now very cool and that's great to hear um uh, you know that great expertise in in the animation and claymation actually providing value in other ways to nft projects and and finding a way to to stand out and bring the community together uh, i feel like you know you need to have extra value you know nowadays because it's uh not just enough to just have a graphic and turn it into an nft and, and people hold it because you know how, in what ways will that accrue value or, or bring the community together so i'm interested to hear on on how your team is working out with you know this television series and you know maybe it'll be the next robot chicken lucky ducky except for you know with nft holders uh sort of contributing to the process in some way um with the actual, you know, owning of the NFTs, uh, will there be some, you know, decentralized governance or how do people sort of contribute as an NFT holder to the future of the project? So there's a couple ways. Um, one being if you're in the Discord, you just have access to me as, as the founder. Just, like you can hit me up and, you know, share an idea. And, and some of our best ideas have come just from the community saying like, oh, this character is, you know, like, what if his name was this? And we just go, that's brilliant, let's use it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's very like, you know, simple level of it, but on a, a more in-depth way, we're actually building um, community involvement with uh, storytelling right now with, uh, we have this project called Backstage Pass, where um, if you're a holder, you get to um, now tell a story with us in this project where mm -hmm. every, um, every element we're telling the story through the, the first, um, the first paragraph through the last is voted on by the, the commu uh, community and there's actually a writer's room where, where you can pitch ideas and you can share what you think the next part should be and then we're compiling it and letting people vote on uh, each step of the way. So it's not something like um, very basic where you get to choose the color of a shirt or, or like, mm -hmm. you know, what type of hat. It's more like, you know, which direction do they go and, and that really is more like a choose your own adventure style. Mm -hmm. um, so we're 
building this story with the community's uh, input and um, there's going to be chances for them to actually feature their characters in the story and um, it's going to be really kind of fun to like have little easter eggs and little pieces along the way and um, really the best chance to get your ideas featured in something that is to this level of, of uh, an animation or stop motion and um, you know we're we're trying to um, walk on uh, two levels here where we're working with the community but also we have a hand with the studios that we're trying to mm -hmm. pitch and develop um, so some things have to be kind of kept um, a little bit more guarded as far as the our direction of it mm -hmm. and but we can still have this community side where we want to like really focus on what they want to see and there's some mixing mixing between um, but yeah, there's going to be great opportunities if we if we do get picked up as as a show. Um, we want to do some stuff where maybe there's a way you can get your, your character featured on an episode as a background character. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to affect the um, the rarity of of your character. If you have like a floor level ducky that you're not like super thrilled about, um, maybe it gets to be a background character in an episode and or gets to have a speaking role now. At, levels up a little bit because mm -hmm. now you're on screen and, and people really see it. So it kind of changes the, the mix a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. just thinking like really fun ways to uh, involve the community, but also change up the makeup of, of these uh, metrics that we have in uh, on NFTs. Very cool. And from what I've seen, you know, in, in multiple sort of use case industries for, for NFTs, for example, in in GameFi, it's great if a game has NFTs, but if the game isn't fun to play, uh, or you know, it's sort of just like fun for a few minutes, then it's not really going to last. You know, it actually has to have that fundamentals of, of being a good game. And I feel like this would be the same case for a, a production or a show. You know, it, it's great to have NFTs, but you really have to focus on the traditional business to ensure that it's going to succeed. And you know, I'm sure you have the experience working with all these shows and animation. You know large-scale animation shows that it needs to have the fundamentals and the nfts is a nice added value but you know if the show is not a good show uh, nfts are not going to save it you know so how much are you focusing on you know making this as serious as something that you know will have a, so many viewers and become you know big like like robot chicken did yeah it was a, a huge consideration from the start that um you know, there was a lot of pressure on us from the early days to have um, very like Web3 specific iconography and, and um, even traits from other projects that were, you know, maybe six months a year ago were very popular and very like on, in vogue. Um, but having the, the foresight of a year or two years from now, like all that can change. And mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to have memes and stuff that was relevant, like six months or a year ago and then mm -hmm. had to explain the studios were like well that's <laughs> a trait that you know was popular six months ago and now like no one remembers that project anymore and mm -hmm. um, so we want to keep things very tight to um, the story and the concept and it was difficult because you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of projects that do that sort of work where it's like they involve all the other community projects and uh, it starts to get a little watered down that way mm -hmm. um, but you know there's um, I think there's a way to have fun with it still where you can have this community side and you can do the fun stuff on the um, with the community while you're also developing a real uh, fine-tuned um, studio work mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to uh, to do is, is kind of walk both sides and there's you know there's still space for both I think that you can have a little bit of overlap and uh, but we just don't want to have a show where there's a bunch of like characters from other projects popping in every moment and then like if someone's not in the NFT space, they go well, like, "What's the reference? Like, why? Mm -hmm. my, I don't get that." Um, so that's why, um, you know, I, I'm trying to take my knowledge from uh, working in the studios a little bit and, and kind of infuse that into this, and just think about like, what's going to be relevant for us five years from now or ten years mm -hmm. from now, and trying to have that longevity uh, to the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's great to be looking that deep in towards the future, and you, know, you can have success of uh, like. Family Guy or The Simpsons, where you know, 20 years later, they're still they stay current, and there's so many references in those shows um, to sort of pop culture. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, different age groups, some people pick up on it, and some people have no idea. But it still makes sense if you don't know what they're talking about, you know. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Like, Robot Chicken was really great to work on, and um, the stuff is, like, has to be, like, mass appeal, and that's the mm -hmm. thing we're still working on with, uh, with Web3. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if we are going to be on a, a series for streaming or for even, the, like, a web series, um, it has to have uh, appeal outside of the, the NFT space. And right now, we're still working on that, um, that appeal. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're trying to make these characters something that everyone can enjoy, whether you're in NFTs, whether you're not. Um, that's kind of our secret sauce, I guess you say. You say. But the uh, the thing that really I try to remind myself is like, this is something that like uh, I can show my mom and she's mm -hmm. going to appreciate, or is this something that like I had to explain to her what the joke is in NFTs? Or, you know, that's mm -hmm. it's kind of the hump is like if you can get you know your friends and family that don't understand web3 mm -hmm. space or aren't on top of the latest uh, jokes and stuff then that's i think where the the the, the thing is for um, finding mainstream appeal mm -hmm. i think we'll we'll get there eventually with bringing them into the space but um, these are kind of like the first steps we have to take to get there um, mm -hmm. definitely yeah, and, and yeah. with you know the industry overall and, and animation and, and television uh, based on your experience, where do you see sort of the industry in, in, in doing what Lucky Ducky is doing, where you know, they're looking at implementing NFTs into mainstream animation? You know, are there other players that are doing this, or do you think this is still you know, at the very inception and, and early days? I think it's, um, we're, still, we're still seeing like the very first steps from these studios who are able to like, maybe throw a little budget here and there to uh, test it out and they have maybe like a few people on a team for you know for their metaverse you know side uh i'm, I'm looking at like uh teams from disney doing the i think Vive is that you kind of vv um they're doing more of the collectible side and they haven't really dabbled too much in a full collection of characters mm -hmm. um nickelodeon has done some work with uh Recur, and they've done some uh uh, some projects that are very nostalgic oriented, like coming back to the stuff that we grew up with and launching those as NFTs, uh, which you know I, I think is a really a good effort on on getting um, the stuff that works. Um, the problem being though is like once you have those characters out there, like what do you do with it, and what do you have mm -hmm. as a next step? Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's I think all these these bigger uh, players are, are still kind of testing the waters. Um, I'm looking at Crapopolis right now with Fox, mm -hmm. and they have and they have a show made, yeah. um, and they have characters now as NFTs, um, so they're kind of in a good place right now to really kind of position themselves as like, hey, we're a new player, mm -hmm. we're doing NFTs, uh, we can kind of bridge the gap a little bit, um, and it's kind of a fresh, uh, fresh show and a fresh NFT series. Mm -hmm. um, so stuff like that, I think, is really kind of starting to get into where I, I see things going. Um, but a lot of them is are, are still kind of like they throw out a little thing here and there and just kind of see what happens and and then they kind of pull back a little bit and then they test again. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still kind of in a very early early phase of that. And these huge companies, uh, for anyone who's worked on at like a big studio or a big company, it takes so long to, for them to like try things out. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked at Hallmark, it took us like a year to produce uh, a new concept. Um, we were we, we we would probably be the best position to do NFTs at the time, like to you know say you could get a card with an NFT attached to it for mm -hmm. your your birthday or Christmas, mm -hmm. but that probably would have taken like five years to like develop wow. and out with, um, just because <laughs> of so many people who are in their like yeah. older phase of mm -hmm. development and, and just don't want to try new things. So um, yeah. any any studio trying this out is like they're very timid, and very like slow to work this out and there i mean i'm sure there's some good people working at these studios but it just it takes a long time um definitely i, kn I know what you mean and, and we actually did speak to uh fox tv and, and crapopolis you know in the, in the previous months as well and i was impressed you know to see uh, some of these major news networks are looking at in in nfts in their show and i feel like it's something that can catch on as long as you, you know, play the fundamentals right and actually have a good show that people want to watch. It could be a funnel for more people that, you know, not just the people that already have NFTs and they're already like crypto native, like people to actually get into it um, and realize that the value of it from the show and from the value that, that 
the NFTs are adding into the show. Yeah, no, it, I, I like to think of it like um, Adventure Time, how like this that show uh, is a main, uh, like a staple now for kids and for adults. And uh, but when I was first launching, um, they took years to try to go to different studios and try to like mm -hmm. pitch their idea. And finally, when um, the I think the pilot got leaked, then it went viral and people really got attached to it. And then finally, uh, Cartoon Network took notice and, and wanted to work with them and. and bring it about but like imagining a different world where it started as an NFT series and people could really get into the characters and mm -hmm. you know start you know trading and, and adding value to the, the NFTs um, we could have seen a different process to it getting picked up and, and turned into a, a, a full series and, and uh, entertainment so mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I get excited about is just kind of flipping the script a little bit on pitching and, and building a community and we have all this fan art now and this the, the community has all these ideas and stuff that they want to bring which was impossible um like maybe a decade ago when i first started pitching mm -hmm. shows mm -hmm. um it was like i was just a small potato at a studio yeah. saying like hey can you uh come with my idea and come along with me on a journey and they're like we have no idea whether you're gonna do anything with this or like mm -hmm. what the value is Mm -hmm. um, but now we can point to all these things and we can show the, the community, we can show the value. Um, so we have all these metrics now that really add to uh, the story we're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. And moving into 2023, what are some of the next stages for, for the growth of, of Lucky Ducky and what you're looking to accomplish? Yeah, so um, we, we haven't really stopped since the, uh, since the mint day. Like, it's been um, a, a long process, but we're... Um, really excited about all these things we get to now try out and, and experiment with and showcase what we can do. Um, on the short term, we've been doing some really great work with um, expanding into, uh, we're looking at other side. We have a other side plot where we've been developing. Um, we have a, an animator who has been working on a Lucky Ducky character that's going to be playable in the game. So once we have the full SDK, we can now go into our space and run around as a ducky hopefully and we're um, experimenting in that realm obviously there's like still a lot we have to like learn about and figure out on on the SDK side um, we're also working with uh, World Wide Web 3 the um, the art the uh, 8 bit game so mm -hmm. you have a playable ducky that you can run around in the, that game mm -hmm. uh, and then um, beyond that we're also uh, we have a pitch deck we have been pitching studios um, and that's been a non-stop development. Uh, and with that, we've uh, partnered with a uh, new advisor, uh, Pete Levin, who I uh, worked with um, over at Robot Chicken, and uh, we've known each other for a better part of a decade now. Uh, and he's super excited about the, the project, and um, he's helping with us as far as the production goes. So he's um, re recently worked on uh, uh, Marcel Lachelle, he was assistant director on that, um, and he's really great with knowing the um, nuts and bolts of a production. So, if we go to a studio and say they say like, "How much will an episode cost?" He can break down for them. Um, you know, each episode of his claymation, if it's stop motion, mm -hmm. if they say we only want if it's two D, uh, and you know we have to make that decision. He can break down the cost. He can figure out the time frame. Um, he's a really great person. Wow. He's also a uh, great animator uh, on top of that so um, really great person to have on our team to advise and I'm kind of like bringing him into the NFT space a little bit and kind of walking him through the uh, crypto side of things but he's helping us with the uh, the um, production side mm -hmm. um, so to just kind of uh, helping us get really serious about this this work we're doing and uh, you know that we have the connections to make this into a real thing um, you know, it's not just like a pie in the sky idea we want to do. It's mm -hmm. actually like we have uh, a full address book of people we're, we're reaching out to and um, trying to bridge, bridge that gap uh, for studios and in, in, in our project. Um, wow. On top of that, we've also just worked with uh, Rich Zim, uh, who is also an awesome animator. And he is uh, most well known for like Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, James mm -hmm. the Giant Peach. Um, wow. He has an amazing claymation style that he brought to Lucky Ducky that he did a uh, airdrop with us um, 
back in October for Halloween. So we were able to give out his first uh, NFT he, he's ever done. Um, he worked on with us for the past like three months and uh, full on claymation characters like bouncing around. Um, I'll try to uh, send that to you so you can see what the, the animation looked like. But um, yeah, just to have somebody who worked on all these crazy projects and now he did a project for Lucky Ducky and we're now bringing him into Web3. It's just like cool to get to like work with all the people I look up to and mm -hmm. admire and now share what I'm, I know and, and, and bring everybody together for that uh, through this project. Wow, incredible That's, and yeah, both, cool. both great additions to the team. Um, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at uh, that video and I can leave it in the description box as well for, for the viewers. To, to take a look. That sounds really great. And, you know, I love the giant peach and some of those old school ones. So yeah, it's great to have, you know, the traditional heavy hitters getting involved with uh, these NFTs. So that's great to hear, Jeremy. Um, now, what is the best way for people to just follow along with these updates that you're talking about and just stay deep involved in the community if they want to learn more? Yeah, so um, the quickest way is uh, Twitter is uh, Lucky Ducky NFT. Um, we're posting like pretty much every day on updates and, and keeping up with the community that way. Um, Discord is also great. We're doing activities and games um, on the fun side, but we're also uh, right in, we have a writer's channel. So if, if people want to get involved and maybe share their, uh, their ideas, uh, best way is to pick up a decky and then you get invited into the writer's room and you can be part of the storytelling we're doing. Um, it's really fun to get to see what people bring to the table and and um yeah there's still four stages of our, our storytelling we're doing for this um this animation so um discord i can't remember the name off the top of my head but it's like discord slash uh lucky ducky nft mm -hmm. um I'll, I'll share your link with you later um but yeah that's the two best ways um to get involved sounds great jeremy thank you so much for your insights and yeah, I will leave the, those other social links as well in the description box below. All the best with Lucky Ducky moving forward into 2023, and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.